All right, so we're back out here, gonna drill some more holes. Thought I'd do another uh, mid to late winter test with this uh, rigid octane and the, uh, the key drill. Any of those that follow my channel, you've probably seen the, uh, the fish I caught last week. It's kind of been a crazy week for me. Uh, I caught a state record sturgeon and it's uh, a little unexpected, the, the media attention it got uh, kind of went nationwide and I got a bunch of calls and stuff. But anyways, if you're interested in that, check out my uh, previous video. The whole thing's on video, uh, 120 pound sturgeon. And uh, for, just wanted to say a personal thank you to everyone that sent me a, a kind message congratulating me and uh, wishing me well. That uh, meant a lot and I really appreciate it. But if, you, if you're interested in that, uh, you can check out the other video. But if you, if you look in that video, I, I referred to issues we were having with our drill um, getting the hole bigger, we ended up drilling five holes and we had to call someone for backup to, to help us out because my drill wasn't working. What I normally do is I drill three overlapping holes uh, and then I don't go all the way through. So there's no water in there. It's just a big, you know, triangle of holes. And then I go back and, and finish each one out. That way you're not going through a bunch of holes with the water and slush flooded in there. I found once that water and slush floods in there, it's just, it'll kill your drill, it'll kill your battery, and it's just not good for it. It just takes so much torque. Uh, we actually did the, the formula and the amount of slush that's in a, a 24 inch column, eight inch column or seven and a half in this case, uh, the amount of slush and weight is just, it's amazing when you do the calculation. I couldn't believe how much that is. So when you have, you know, ice 12 inches or less, it's not, it's not a big deal, but we had 24 inches of ice. I don't know what I have out here. This is the same lake I've been doing all my testing on. Um, I'm guessing it's over 20 inches. I'll drill a hole and find out. There's also about 10 to 12 inches of snow out here. Um, so that might make it a little more difficult too. So what I wanted to do is I want to test this cutout theory. Um, I'm guessing around three to 400 inches, it's just going to cut out. It's, there's an overload protection in this drill that's designed to just to protect it. Um, and I, I didn't really get that with the DeWalt drill. It just would kind of die. But also I did notice that there was some, uh, you know, smell, funky electrical smell, um, not really any smoke, but it just, it didn't smell right. And it, it, I can't imagine it's good for the drill. I haven't really had this with the rigid, except for when I, when it did cut out, when I tried putting a new battery on and then, you know, just, you know, really abusing it more, I did start smelling some stuff. So, um, what I'm going to do now is just, I'm going to drill it till it cuts out. I'm going to drill the first hole here. We'll see how much ice we have. A lot of snow here. A lot of snow. Again, a fully charged nine amp hour battery, octane battery, speed one and uh, drill mode setting. Let's find out how much ice we have here. All right. We have 21 inches of ice. Not quite as much as we had out there on the, uh, the St. Croix the other night. So 21 inches. Now I'm just gonna drill and we'll see when it cuts out. I'll just keep going until it cuts out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, so hole number eight, it cut out on me. So what is that? Uh, 160 inches. I'm gonna look at the battery. I'm guessing we probably have two to three bars still left. I'll take the battery off, reset it. We'll see if we can go a little further. You have to take the, the battery off, reset the drill. Now we should be good to go. I think the cutout is happening. It's detecting, you know, difference in loads. It's that's seeing the torque there. So I think that's what's happening.
if she cut out again. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still showing three bars, three full bars. So it's it's detecting an extra load here, perhaps a heat, a heat thing. It's just getting too warm. I guess I can't really, uh, I can't really say for certain. I mean, we should be good now. I mean, it's yeah, it's going good now. It still seems to be strong. So we got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 180 inches of ice. I'm gonna keep going here. Cut out again. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't really say what's causing this. Um, I got nothing. Nothing here. I'll take the battery off again. It feels warm. It's warm for sure. Right above the trigger here, I'm guessing it's uh, probably 100, 105 degrees. We still have three bars. Yep, again, cut out. So this is the problem we were having out there on the river uh, last Saturday. We drilled the first, uh, the first eight holes fine. Actually, it's almost the same, the same amount, eight holes, before I started have, having issues. And then the rest of the night, you know, it just kind of had issues like that. So, you know, I'm not sure what's going on here. I don't know if it's this drill. Maybe I just have a faulty drill. I need to exchange it or... It could be that I'm putting too much pressure down. So this time, I won't put as much pressure down. We'll see what happens. Okay, so it just, it just cut out there. I wasn't doing any up or down, side to side, com uh, consistent pressure, it cut out. Again, we gotta clear the battery, reset it. So this is the issue I was having the other night. Um, we just called in someone else to, to help us. I didn't wanna deal with this while we were fighting a fish. So yeah, I'm gonna keep going here. I'm gonna see what happens if it just keeps cutting out. Uh, we have one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten holes, maybe eleven there. We should we should get close to double that with this battery. So not really sure what's going on. I mean you saw my prior videos, I, I did uh, sixty-nine holes through eight inches of ice. So that's you know four hundred inches without any problem. Cut out again. I wanted to try doing it without lifting it, see what happened. And it cut out. And clear that battery again. So you can see why this is kind of a pain. Having to reset it every time. Shouldn't have to do that. I understand it's probably protecting the drill or the battery or whatever. Um, maybe not the best tool for the job. I'm not sure. We still got three bars. You know, Plenty of battery power. Okay, so here's, this is something a little interesting I just figured out here. When this, sorry, a little out of breath. When this battery was full, when I fully engaged it and the uh, the drag of this drill 
would cause the brake to engage one time and then it would start spinning fine. And then when I stopped, it would also engage. But now that the battery's been worn down a little bit, when I pull this without any load, it's just consistent braking. It never did that before. Might be onto something. It might be engaging that brake perhaps somehow in there, but it's never done that. You know, it shouldn't do that. It's engaging that brake. Has something to do with the, the battery power, I'm thinking. Because with a full battery, it didn't do that. And no cutouts that time. Not quite understanding it here. There's a cutout. Still got two bars. Still got two bars. Another cutout. All right, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna keep doing this. Um, I'm gonna think about this a little bit, see what might be going on. Maybe I'll. Uh, maybe I'll just exchange this drill. Maybe I got a bad drill. We got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And we got 15 holes. 15 holes at 20 inches. What is that? Uh, 300 inches. That should be a lot better than that. All right. Well, I don't know if that helps anyone or not. I know there's been guys on the uh, on Facebook in the forums talking about this cutout issue. I wanted to do a real world test out here with you know, mid to late winter ice, snow on the snow on the lake. I'll see what would happen. Sorry, I'm a little out of breath here. Um, I don't know. I'm going to keep testing. I don't think I still don't think it's a bad purchase, given the price of the drill and the fact that they offer a lifetime service agreement. Um, I mean, right now, you know, they'd probably replace it if I said it wasn't working. So um, something to think about. Buyer beware, I guess. Uh, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and uh, if you want to see a big sturgeon, check out my prior video.